let me just introduce you guys though, because I'm being a oh, bad shit. host okay. once again. Fair enough. As always. But uh I mean listen, a lot of you guys uh are probably aware, or maybe some of you aren't, but I am joined uh, by uh the the wonderful podcast True On host Liz Franzig and Brace Belden. Okay. They are um I guess they're no longer podcast hosts. They're like straight up. What is the what's the term for? I mean, you guys are just like you guys are reporters now. No, 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 no. no. You're journalists. No, no, no. We, are no. Not, we reject that label. No, no, no. We do you, not you, identify as such. Yeah, no. I, I think you guys are you guys are doing some <laughs> journaling. There is no. We are. How are how are people sending me messages from this? No, we are. Listen, we are <laughs> unlicensed private investigators. Yeah. For We're not public. journalists. We're not journalists. I'm under no journalist code. There is no. Oh, yeah. Is, I don't have to pay dues to any weird WGA uh, East or anything. We are we are here strictly as uh, uh, civilians. Yeah. We're just trying to get to the truth, the bottom of the matter. Today on the podcast we just recorded, I talk shit about Vicky Ward's boots for no reason. So, like, we really don't have... That's, you're not going to hear that on the New York Times. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you're you're hitting your journalist, but you're like a truth-telling journalist. You're you're hitting avenues that mainstream media is too afraid to to cover. Like Frankly. Wiki Ward's Ward's uh, uh, boots. <laughs> well, exa- I mean, the thing is, so speaking of cutting. Well, so here's tomorrow. the thing. I, uh-oh. Uh-oh. We're here, prior we're here. prior to this trial started starting Ghislaine Maxwell, who, for those who don't know, Ghislaine Maxwell's family is fabulously wealthy and also um, connected to uh, uh, one of the longest lasting countries in human history, Israel. Her father, Robert Maxwell, was a notorious uh, spy, but uh, mainly worked for Mossad and was buried with state, state honors there after his mysterious death. Anyways, this guy's daughter, Ghislaine, is on trial. Her family, very wealthy, used to the finer things in life. And one of the big complaints about her being locked up in jail prior to the trial was, A, she wasn't allowed a sleep mask. B, the food wasn't high, high, wasn't uh, nutritious enough. And C, that everyone was so sort of rude to her. Um, which, I mean, yeah, conditions in American prisons Absolutely. and jails are very bad. But it is incredible that one of her main complaints was... Uh, was about sleep masks. And now her whole thing is her brother gave a press conference yesterday. The sole intention of which seemed to be to say that she is sick of having to eat hard boiled eggs for lunch every day during the trial, which I didn't know. So she must be farting up a storm. So you think, so you think they're gearing up for a Jeffrey Epstein style, uh, you know, uh, uh, assisted suicide, uh, play here. Cause they, I mean, if you, you guys read the New York times coverage, obviously, uh, by journalists such as yourselves um, that, that, you know, did the journaling yeah. there in the New York Times when they talked about how Jeffrey Epstein certainly had killed himself uh, because yes. a friend of a friend, uh, you know, the, the uncle works at, the old uncle works at Nintendo of, mm-hmm. of uh, prison confessions. The guy who worked at a kitchen overheard another guy say that uh, he definitely killed himself and also because he, mm-hmm. he was in his fifis the entire yeah. time. He didn't like prison. Case closed. Yeah. They got it. Well, my thing with that is some of the evidence they seem to be using for saying he did kill himself was a bunch of statements of him saying, months, I'm not going to kill myself. Because they're like, look, he wouldn't say that unless he was lying. Uh, I think with Ghislaine, there's, I don't think they're going to take Ghislaine out unless maybe no. they give her a bad, bad boiled egg or something. No. Yeah. Well, from what I understand, the scope of this... Uh... The scope of this trial is also very narrow, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Well, and yeah. That ultimately, the revelations aren't going to be as insane or as um, interesting from the the uh, point of view of the average American. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that maybe don't understand fully the ins and outs of the case or haven't really been tuning in except for like the blockbuster stuff, understandably. But they think that, okay, um, if we don't hear big blockbuster names about, you know, you know, all of the bunga bunga parties they were hosting and all the blackmail tapes and all of the crazy politicians 
that haven't already been named. Like we've already Thank heard names that we day. all knew before: Bill Clinton, Donald Trump, Trump Prince Andrew. Three. Those are all people who have come up in the trial already in the first week and a half. But the the focus of the case isn't about that, like at all, and really is about the girls and the victims, you know. And so the the scope of the prosecution, at least, like they don't want to have it be so wide that all of these like blockbuster crazy names are getting thrown around because that's just going to like muddy up the jury's perception about what the case is really about, which is the abuse of young girls. Yeah. Um, e even though, you know, we are hoping that there is some stuff, right? I mean, I, I don't know. The today was supposed to be the CDs. Like I personally want to know what the fuck's going on with the CDs. Have you been able to figure out Have you, are you, are you getting up close to the TV? Are they, are they accidentally not able to, you know, cover up some of the names? Like, what's going on? Yes. Definitely getting real up close. Brace was basically doing a handstand trying to figure out what the upside-down name that they didn't redacted that was written and in Sharpie on a CD was. And you I got was it. right. I was yeah. right. I was correct. I was right. It was the name of his goddaughter, Selena. Yes, which but is we will never game. obviously find out what's in the CDs, right? That's so not... that that's the that's the whole thing is we found out yesterday that there were way more CDs full of pictures than we ever knew, and in fact today we heard some hard numbers of how many images were on them. But we saw thirteen just in one one picture of evidence of thirteen thick like PhD. I'm going to learn like ten inch and, thick. Big guys. Princeton, Princeton, Yale style binders of CDs, all of the spines redacted, but all of them filled with pictures, you know, with, with, with photographs on these CDs. Uh, we, I mean, obviously, you know, we're not going to see any pictures of Alan Dershowitz eating a baby like chicken wing style. Right. But they, uh, you know, today they, they started out with uh, some people to identify some images, some FBI agents to identify images that were on the picture uh, on the CDs. And honestly, mostly it turned out to just be Jeffrey and Ghislaine in the very few that they showed us. I think we found out that the FBI estimated the girl, one of the special agents who was on the stand today, yesterday and today, estimated that there were about 38,000 photos. 38,000. That is so many photos. We saw five, and they were just like vacation photos of Jeffrey and Ghislaine. There are not 38,000 photos of Jeffrey and Ghislaine. Exactly. <laughs> like, these are very different. There's a very different set of photos on there. But I want to know, like, we're just I not going to see. But, like, what everybody obviously wants to know is, like, you know, this is the blackmail folder, right? Is it not? I mean, that's the suspicion uh, is that, like, there's cameras inside the house, as we all know. And that, uh, you know, it's meticulously documented with the names of famous people. Um, I think there was a, some other additional details on there, too. Like, obviously, this is not a case about Jeffrey Epstein. This is Elaine Maxwell and, and what her direct involvement was with Jeffrey Epstein. And as you, Liz, many times have uh, mentioned uh, in your coverage so far, um, it, it, it revolves around grooming, right? Which is not exactly a well-defined legal term. Um, they're not going to get to the good stuff is what you're saying. Other than justice being served, hopefully, which would be good. Well, I, I mean, it, so it dep in my, in my opinion, um, you know, just taking sort of the long view of things, it seems that if anyone was sort of running an operation, it would have been Ghislaine rather than Jeffrey, considering both her family's history and also Jeffrey was sort of a dope in a lot of ways. I mean, he was a, he could be like a smooth operator when he needed to be, but um, you know, he the man had notoriously his vices, whereas Ghislaine, um, I mean, her only vice was loving Jeffrey too much, but uh, she, uh, she seems to have, if anyone was really like pulling a huge blackmail operation, it seems like she would have had a really heavy hand in it. Um, you know, the, the thing is like, we, for some, we did find out that on these CDs is just images as far as we know, just photographs. However, during the evidence, uh, they showed us evidence from his house uh, yesterday. They showed us a previously unknown, at least to any journalist or anybody but members of the FBI, huge like Tupper, no, like kitchenware bin, like a giant plastic bin that like you keep yeah. under your bed. Right? Kitchen aid. Rubber made. Uh, rubber made. Rubber made bin of hard drives, 
like hard drives are the kind where you would keep up uh, videos. But none of that, only a few things from a single hard drive were actually entered into evidence. And those were all just emails written by Ghislaine. What's on the rest of those hard drives? We have no idea. And we weren't given any indication because Jeffrey, I mean, think of it this way. This is a billionaire, supposedly, very rich man at least, with more high society connections than you could shake a goddamn stick at, who is constantly having these very well-connected business leaders, politicians, religious leaders over to his house at the same time as young girls that we know that he is having um, sometimes legal, sometimes illegal sexual liaisons with. It doesn't take a goddamn, uh, you know, d uh, unlicensed private detective to figure out what the hell is going on there, right? I mean, that gives you a huge amount of leverage if you, for instance, have video of Prince Andrew doing something with a 14-year-old girl. You have a ton of power after that. Um, you know, Bill Clinton, any of these people. And it's like, uh, you know, we, 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 we know that that stuff's out there, but it, yeah, we're not going to see it during this trial. I mean... Will we ever see it? I feel like it's over. I mean, they, they tied up the ultimate loose end, right? Which is... When, when there's no criminal trial over Jeffrey Epstein, I, I don't know what kind of um, like what kind of opportunity victims may have to to be able to other than like the or, the original fund that they set up for all of mm -hmm. uh, Jeffrey Epstein's victims. Other than that, they really don't have anything to be able to uh, to relitigate that. I or maybe I'm wrong. I mean, I think the, the hope is really sending Ghislaine to prison, having someone take accountability for and like saying like this happened, we did this, you know, I mean, I think for, at least for the victims, that is, that's the, that's the hope, right? Um, the money stuff aside, you know, the fund and the way that it's dispersing his estate to victims, I, I think there's a couple pieces out about that. It's there's some, um, that's been going on for a couple years now, or since 2020, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's really like, I, you know, look, I, you know, we haven't heard anything from Ghislaine. I, I think that she might take the stand, which would be pretty fucking insane. Um, but everything in her demeanor and the way that she presents herself in the court, which is Jonathan, fucking so bizarre, by the way. Yeah, like, yeah, this so girl is, like, she's getting up, she's laughing all of the time. The she's, fuck? like, kind of, like, coquettish. Like, it's a very weird... She has a very weird pose about her. Um, it, the whole, it's, it's like, um, like, anachronistic or something. Yes. It's very, very yeah. weird. And everything that the way that she presents herself and the way that she's talked about her own defense or whatever and the very li limited um, comments that she's made tells me that she literally does not think that she's done anything wrong ever. Whether yeah. she thinks these girls are trash and like disposable and you know, I have no doubt in my mind that she thinks that or whether it's literally that she thinks nothing bad, whether illegal or immoral, occurred. Like, I think it's a combination of both. And that is, like, completely psycho for me to understand, to try to wrap my head around. One of the more interesting aspects right. of being there for the trial is finally being around, and this, I know it probably sounds kind of weird, but being around other people who know this stuff inside and out. Oh, and I'm yeah, not even totally. just talking about, like, like journalist guy, because there's a lot of journalists, there's some journalists there who's like, Epstein is their beat, and they know a lot about him. There's a lot who are sort of just like, especially towards the beginning, less so now, who mm. know less and are kind of just covering this trial as like as crime reporters or whatever. Exactly. But there's a there's been a few people that we've met that are just like they know Ghislaine inside and out. And they have these sort of different opinions. Like, you know, one 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 gentleman we were talking to today is like, I honestly don't think that she thinks she did anything wrong. Like, I think that she has she was abused as a child. We do know she was abused as a child, whether she was sexually abused, we don't know for sure. But like you know, that like she like literally might think that like, well, it's it's actually fine for these children to do, which would track sort of with some of her statements that these kids have repeated or that these adults, former kids have, have uh, repeated. Um, but it's been really interesting to see the different angles that people are taking this stuff. We met this really this financial like guy who just like looks at Epstein's financials and is like obsessed with his financial stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and we, you know, we have heard some 
some new financial news about her. She got a lot more money from Epstein directly than CDs, we knew about. I mean, we we're talking sums CDs of like tens nuts. of millions, maybe 30 million total just in certain certain series of transactions that they showed us. And so there's a lot of money being floated around here. Um, I don't think that any of her intelligence connections are really going to come up because A, that doesn't benefit the case. B, the prosecutor is James Comey's daughter. Yeah. Which is so, so weird, by the way. Yeah. Yeah. Like, James she Comey's was, daughter? like questioning uh, an FBI agent. And it's like, girl, that was like your dad was her boss. Like, it seems yeah. weird. She's James Comey's daughter. And didn't she personally, or at least like her team, flubbed the original suicide tape? Uh, <clears throat> Uh, attempted uh, suicide tape yeah. of Jeffrey Epstein. And uh, from what I understand, it's like long gone and, and yes. they just simply can't find it. No backup, by the way, as well. Yeah, I, I don't know. That might have been B the Bureau of Prisons. I'm not sure. I saw some stuff, but I actually didn't get into it about if they flubbed it. But they did. I mean, the FBI has repeatedly, repeatedly flubbed the Epstein case in general, going back to the 90s, yeah. having people report, report oh, it to yeah. them. I mean, the, it's, FD, it's, the FBI had a, a, a separate lawsuit uh, ongoing when uh, Acosta basically gave him this yeah. sweetheart deal that effectively shut the FBI deal, uh, FBI yeah. um, investigation, investigation down. Yeah. 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 And it's, we I heard mean, today, so like, the, I mean, the raid on Epstein's townhouse, which happened in July 2019, oh, yeah, was they, a total oh. disaster. I, I mean, they got the a lot of John stuff, Rock. but apparently, I didn't know this, and I mean, this was like really shocking when we found this out. So they enter the townhouse, they come in with a saw, it's like a whole fucking thing, and they have a warrant, and they're pulling all this evidence. This is where the binders of CDs come from. Now they get to one of the many bathrooms. By the way, we found out there are 40 rooms in this townhouse. 40, which feels excessive. Um, they get to the bathroom, one of the bathrooms, and they find a huge safe. Now, that safe comes out, they, they pull open that safe, we find, and this was reported at the time, binders, passports, uh, diamonds, I don't know, manila envelopes full of cash, like, it's a little unclear. Apparently, and this is what we found out during the trial, the warrant that they had that day didn't allow them to seize the items in the safe. Now... When that happens, because sometimes you have like a narrow warrant and you have to wait, whatever. Usually what happens is you post up somebody with the, next to the stuff to make sure that nothing gets moved and you preserve the kind of chain of evidence, provenance, whatever. That didn't happen. Instead, they come back five days later with a warrant. They leave the premises and come back. And they're like, okay, we're here for the stuff. And, every, and the townhouse is like, Oh, we don't have that stuff, actually. That's so weird. Um, but Jeffrey's lawyer can bring it to you in two suitcases. I mean, this is astounding. You get okay. a fucking <clears throat> you get a fucking warrant <laughs> to raid this guy's house. And then you they, they I mean they took all the stuff out of the safe and photographed it like or, like around the safe. Unfortunately, like in a the, pile. And the photo was very low res, oh uh, and so you couldn't exactly make out all of it, but we know what was in it. I mean, we know there was an Austrian passport, at least uh, multiple passports, but we know about an Austrian passport with his home listed as Riyadh, Saudi Arabia. Um, and, it, you know, like th this guy has all of this. I mean, this is his goddamn safe, or at least one of his safes. And it's, I don't understand the type of warrant that allows you to take every single other thing from his house that you want, but you can't take the contents of a safe that are identical, because we're talking about those binders of CDs in there. They took binders of CDs from shelves in other closets, but they can't take it from the safe. And so his lawyer brings back these suitcases full of all this stuff, and they're like, well, I guess it's all here. Well, you didn't look on the CDs. So you might have seen that there's CDs in this binder. You don't know What's yeah, what if on that's them? the good stuff, and, like uh, the actual, uh, you know, serious blackmail stuff? Exactly. And, you know, there's hard drives in there, too. And it's like, so, you know, his lawyer could have just replaced that those CDs with any, I mean, five days later? That's great. Yeah. I could, you know how many CDRWs you could rewrite in five days? Also, Or just put a bunch of, like, Offspring CDs in there and be like, I don't know. It's just, exactly, like, his favorite. Exactly. Like, Young, this is young. He loved Young Thug. He kept it in his safe. Like I think the real, the real problem with that isn't necessarily that the, you know, that they took I guess five days. But like, why did they get such a narrow warrant and not one that would also, uh, would cover you know locked 
things. I feel like you're going to have... Don't... Leave someone on the premises while you go get the warrant. This is, that's usual, like, that's, like, normal practice by the FBI. You post up an officer until they go get the warrant, they go to the courthouse, then they come back, and they're like, okay, we have it, now we can take it. You don't just leave and let someone, like, and you say, like, well, we'll see you soon. Don't do anything that we wouldn't do. That destroys like, chain of custody, right? Like, oh, yeah, so it's like, over. oops, honor system, scouts honor. Exactly, exactly, exactly. I mean, the, the, okay, oh, so the international sex trafficker's lawyer took the stuff away and he's giving it all back to you exactly it's like give me a goddamn break you know what i yeah. mean it's it's and by the way epstein's lawyers while he was in jail were bringing in girls like 19 year old legal assistants who carried no briefcases or anything with them and, and left them alone in a rock locked room with jeffrey epstein that police did not enter you know there, he's meeting with his legal team and like jeffrey epstein was having sex with teenage girls legally teenage you know above 18 but teenage girls while in jail wait this Christ is the manhattan sake. one or are you talking about like in florida uh, palm beach in manhattan no no this is in manhattan they were doing wait, this in manhattan i i know we know for a fact that, that was in uh, the the florida prison where he did that regularly or also could oh leave. yeah yeah jeffrey, yeah but yeah, i did yeah. not know that he could do that in manhattan as well so out. yeah that that only further uh, uh, proves that he was just not trying to kill himself. He probably thought he was protected. Exactly. I mean, the man is the man is obsessed with sex, like to a degree that would make even the horniest, you know, you. man Boy, walk and hope. blush. And he's like still a fatty like fatty liver to the gourmand. Exactly. Precisely, like a jar of caviar still at his fingertips, and he's being delivered this by his lawyers. And also, speaking of the gourmand, his lawyers would also piss off everybody else by just literally buying out the vending machines and giving him yes. all the candy, like hundreds of hundreds of candy bars every time they came to the jail. Not how you make friends in jail. I'm just no, saying, it no. seems like he's, you know, well-fed, well-rested. He was getting his sex in uh, away from his 30-year-old yeah. girlfriend, you know? Exactly. Yeah really able to do yes. that she could call her too without the uh without the manhattan correctional uh facilities mm. like uh monitoring as we know mm -hmm. now so well interestingly that's why enough the new york enough. times reporting was so weird the piece you brought up because they basically said that everything that changed for him was because he got denied bail and it's like what but people get you know there's multiple appeals for bail it makes yeah. absolutely no sense that that would like his entire outlook on his future would suddenly like flip and he would just be like, well, time to go. It's you know so what far. was really suspicious about that article as well? A suspicious lack of coverage around Nicholas Tartaglio, his previous cellmate, oh, yeah. and, uh, and that uh, the, the Epstein team had personally stated, Jeffrey Epstein had personally stated that no, he had not actually tried to kill himself, but this hulking Italian man, ex-cop, who is, uh, you know, who, who was in prison for murdering, like, what, four people in a drug deal he gone bad? Yeah, like, yeah, execution-style murdered people. Yeah. Yeah, ex exactly. <laughs> yeah, that guy was, who had a phone, who had a mobile phone in that prison, by the way. Yes, mm -hmm. he That did. guy was uh, his, his cellmate, and Epstein said that that guy was trying to kill him, and it wasn't a suicide attempt at all. And yet, you know, that was not a part of the New York Times article. I wonder why they just didn't mention that, even though they did cover the whole, like, first suicide attempt as a suicide attempt. Mm -hmm. At the it, very it's, least, it's, they could have just mentioned it. I mean, I, I just don't understand why they would take at face value something that we have been shown that there is, like, the Bureau yeah, of but... Prisons is clearly rife with liars and, you know, and corrupt officials. And also... His fellow prisoners are just to be like, you know, who knows what incentives these people were offered. I mean, it's like the thing is, it, it doesn't make a lot. I Listen, I I, I've been to jail. It is hard to tear a bedsheet in jail because guess what? They think you're going to hang yourself. There's, they take your fucking shoelaces, man. Like they thought about this kind of stuff. And so. I don't know. It it seems totally ridiculous to me. I the weird thing is that the not weird, but like that the last person he called is his his final sort of girlfriend. He had uh he had well forced or made or it's it's kind of unclear 
her marry another girlfriend of his, and she was actually at the courthouse, I think, uh, uh, last Tuesday or something. Um, and so it's been a lot of like, there's been a lot of um, victims and people connected to the case also just at the courthouse, which has been really something to see. Did too. you know that Especially he had a sleep week. apnea machine in his cell? Yes. Yeah. With a yeah. cord? Like, yeah, which that's is on, what, like, yeah, it's like, why use, why not use the cord? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he, yeah was, or, he was ripping his bed sheets, I guess. Also, why not just unplug the sleep apnea machine and die of whatever those things cure? Yeah, but that's not a 100%. Yeah. Well, yeah, you, can, you don't like, always die. Sleep. You just choke a little bit. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. But, I mean, there's a, a lot of nights ahead of you. I know. It doesn't... It makes oh, zero pills, sense. He had pills in his cell, too. He had his own pills. Mm -hmm. There's a lot Here's of... Here's the thing. It almost felt like they were like, cell. come on, just kill yourself. Come on. Here, You're in a bad also, situation, right? I, you've seen the pictures of the cell. I mean, my God. How many sh fucking sheets did that guy have? It looked like a goddamn clan rally in there. I mean, there was, it, it was, it was, he, the guy had like 50 pairs of bed sheets in his cell. And the, the thing is too, like, listen, you want to take yourself out in jail. You can get also like, there's, you can get knives. You can get, at yeah, least I know totally. it's San Francisco city totally. jail. You can get drugs. Like it's, it totally ridiculous. Yeah. Uh, it just all, it, it just, is really suspicious and uh but you know there were a lot of people 10 percent of my audience i pulled it uh after the new york times article came out 10 percent of my audience was now saying that no jeffrey epstein definitely killed himself dude you just simply don't understand it um but you know yeah, maybe they were trolling i don't I mean, know it, it blows my mind but i guess now enough time has passed that like people just don't care people straight up do, do not care um other than you guys the brave journalists that are, you know, defending the truth out there. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I mean, Liz, do you remember, like, the reason, like, the way we started the podcast is Liz and I were just on the phone talking about it. And, like, I mean, I feel like people can, it's hard to kind of remember fully now, but, like, that feeling of, like, holy well, shit, the curtain is getting pulled back. Like... You know, like we are actually seeing somebody who is, we know this stuff happens, but we are seeing like the guy that does it in like, you know, kind of, uh, cotton 4k as they say. And like, I mean, Liz, that was like an insane time period. I mean, what, what we died. Yes. What? Well, we recorded the first episode and we were like, wouldn't it be funny if he, I think it was with Matt Christman and he was like, we were talking about it. There's like no way that he's going to gonna die like they're not gonna kill him that'd be too crazy and that was like three episodes later it was like emergency podcast she's dead the I whole thing was nuts yeah but you're right about it feeling like you get a little peek but then hassan you're also right because it's like whoop, curtain closed you know it's like you get a little peek but then it feels like nope keeping it nice and tight yeah yeah and, and and now with, you know, with the Ghislaine trial, now it's become just like a trial of this sex trafficker. But, well, besides Epstein, you know, who might she have been trafficking these girls? It's like a pimp without Johns, right? Like, yes, who is totally. she actually trafficking these girls to? Um, and it's like, you know, that's a, that's a big question that stands out here. But that's not a question that's really being asked by. I mean, that's, that's part of our thing is like, we're keeping, we're trying to keep a lot of the focus on like, A, yeah, the trial itself, but also like, Really, who is this person and like what was the goal of the project that she was engaging in with Jeffrey yeah. Epstein? And also like this trial, like, yeah, it needs to be put in a certain context because it's so it's just one. It's not a final piece. It's one small piece in a much larger uh, puzzle that needs to get really worked out. Yeah, absolutely. So how does this Five months of like medical how is, does this get resolved in your in your eyes myself. honestly i mean it, it does seem like nice it could go either way i mean it's it's i think it's slanted go. against uh the lane because of how because of how much information is out there uh with respect to like jeffrey epstein now it can't be too hard to pin uh a lot of uh you know a lot of jeffrey epstein's crimes back to her uh, considering that, like, you know, they were in a relationship, especially if the prosecution is both simultaneously trying to claim that, like, Ghislaine was a lover to Epstein, but not for long, but then was an employee. But then as an employee, it's still very obvious that she was sleeping in his bedroom with, you know, photos mm -hmm. of them kissing all around the house. So it, it's a really, like, I, I don't really understand what the play of uh, the defense is here. 
uh, because are they just like trying to overwhelm and confuse like yeah. hitting every angle it, it doesn't really make a lot of sense yeah they're definitely trying to kind of throw anything they can to just muddy the waters and like any juror you know whatever will stick in their mind as a like well maybe you know that's what they want um, and so they're trying a bunch of different stuff. We've talked about it, like the classic slut shaming that they're doing to the victims, which is just really like cartoon, like almost cartoonishly yeah, exactly. the way that they're going at these girls or they're, who are now women, um, grown women, um, is really awful and really just disgusting and depressing to watch. Um, and yeah, well, simultaneously- you know, things like challenging memory and you know ideas about how memories are formed or shaped in the brain you know all that kind of bullshit academic bullshit um so they're trying like all sorts of things i think they're also to be honest trying a lot of things so they can try to get a mistrial mm. oh okay uh, because yeah. that might be i i really i don't know brace i don't know how you feel but i think that the prosecution's cases at first i didn't think this but now i do i do think it's pretty strong yeah, absolutely. Um, and these girls, the witnesses are very strong. And I don't really know what the defense has to come back with other than smearing their reputation. While also simultaneously uh, trying to paint a narrative that Ghislaine was also victim to these white men, these powerful mm -hmm. white men. But that doesn't make sense either. On the one hand, you're like, no. oh, Ghislaine is a girl boss. And, and she is a victim, but then also <laughs> the same person is like literally turning yeah. around and telling uh, victims of, of uh, sex trafficking, like child victims of sex trafficking or now adults, that they're sluts and only in it for the money. Interesting, right? I mean, it feels like that is the only angle they could play. But then if she, I guess this goes back to my point about me thinking that she doesn't think she did anything wrong, which is that the one card she had when he died was for her to come out and be like, hello, I'm Ghislaine Maxwell. I was a victim of this man. I was afraid to come forward. Now he's dead. You know, something, whatever, lie, whatever. But they didn't do that. She ran away. She fled. You know, she was like hiding out in her little cabin in New Hampshire. And um, now it seems like they're really like hesitant to put that kind of narrative forward because I think she's insanely narcissistic. She yes. thinks of herself as above all of these women who she thinks of as low class trash, no matter whether they're, you know, models and actresses or young, you know, they were 12 year old girls in fucking, fucking Florida, you know, drug addict homes or whatever. Like, she thinks of them, all of these girls, as disposable. She's referred to them that way. And she thinks she did nothing wrong. And I literally, that, I mean, it just, that's the only thing and the only approach that would make sense to somehow making her sympathetic with a jury. And they're not doing it. And it's got to be because of her own fucking hubris. I'm fully in agreement with that. I mean, it's, it's, and this is why Liz thinks she's going to take the stand too. I'm I less do. certain, but I always defer to Liz in, in things, in, in her womanly intuition. Um, she's going to Jesse, man. Jesse? Jesse took the stand too. Oh, I believe me. I know. And you know what? As the founding member of Journalists for Jesse, I support him. He's innocent. And I, uh, those guys are lying. It is cool that he did say he hooked up with one of the dudes and the dude was like, that's fucking so not true. It was like, yeah. <laughs> Um, but, uh, <laughs> he, <laughs> I love so that you're paying attention to the real trial of the century oh, we gotta, oh, while oh, simultaneously oh. covering this for like eight hours a day. You don't think that immediately. No, dude, first of all, it's like 13 hour days and then phone immediately. Yeah. Like I'm not looking at it all day. Power that bad boy up. No. Jesse. Jesse. Watch. What's going on with Jesse? Yeah, no, he's yeah. got, yeah. 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 Even, even um, the, uh, even the original, uh, what's their, the original district attorney uh, or whoever it was that dropped uh, his case yeah. is like straight up still on the attack saying that he is like, you know, she did yeah. what she had to do or something. I don't know what it's, <laughs> it's such a ridiculous, like it, it, it wasn't even like well put together. 
No. It doesn't make sense. It's going to make a great movie in like a year. You know some yeah. asshole's going to make it into a movie. I'm going to make it and then I'm <laughs> going to get I'm going to get Jew bashed and be like, "Listen, this is I need 10 million more dollars for this movie." Um no, but with with Ghislaine, it's um I don't know. I I I I I think she is like the defense is going to introduce every single ex boyfriend, jilted lover, former yeah. as, assistant that didn't like them, coworker that they were rude to one time. Our every single that saw them wasted. Exactly. They are. They already laughing. telegraphed that they were going to put to put that in, yeah. and it's like at the end of the day, you got to think it's like what will convince a jury is like. I mean, frankly, I think. Every single girl that has testified so far has had extremely compelling, extremely realistic testimony. None of them were like, yeah, it was with an alien or anything like that. They were like, this is what happened. And like, none of their stories are at all out. I mean, granted, Liz and I, you know, have been following this for a long time and we know some of the stories of these people already. And obviously we, you know, believe them, but like a jury is going to see this. I think in like, I, I don't know. I don't exactly know what strategy Ghislaine's team can really go with here because all of the different directions they've tried to go in so far, it's like at the end of the day, you got to pick one and I'm, I'm not sure what one they can go with. Yeah. Why not all of them? Well, I mean, you guys originally said that the prosecution was, I guess it was Liz's take, but, uh, you said that the prosecution was like a little like Jim Comey's daughter. It was a little, um, you know, not very charismatic. Do you still feel like the prosecution is not doing well, or do you do you feel like that changed now? Maybe they're just riding on the victims, though. Like the testimony of the. Still of don't the find the. I don't find them very charismatic. Still. No. But they're very competent. I'll give them that. There's one lawyer on Gillian's team who I do not think is. I think he's an okay lawyer, but he's the most frustrating man. We sat through five hours of cross-examination from him and the jury, I'm telling you, like, uh, I wasn't in the courtroom, but our buddy was, and he was talking, he was talking to me about how the jury was responding to this. And he said, they looked like their eyes were glossed over. They weren't paying attention that he had totally lost them because he was just so slow moving and frustrating. And this girl, I mean, he was cross-examining one of the victims and, you know, at one point she was like, crying hysterically and you're just like what are you watching this like large like uh, this large man with a huge mustache who's like going on for three hours demanding her like answer stuff about certain dates and certain things and it, i don't know how successful it is i, I really don't because i yeah. think that she came off extremely sympathetic even if some of her testimony contradicts previous testimony you know, I, I don't think it's that big of a deal, to be honest. I don't know. Yeah, I, I agree because it's like, all right, well, what is more compelling to this jury? This woman giving this extremely forward, like straightforward, concise, um, moving and extremely like realistic to somebody who doesn't know much about this. Right. Uh, account of what happened to her or this guy being like, well, it says you said 14 years ago in a lawsuit that actually you were at a party when this happened but you were actually just at a a uh part or like a uh you were hanging out with four people only like that's not gonna like those kind of i mean and the thing is about about trials is that like if there's ever past testimony people contradict themselves in small ways sometimes in big ways a lot right like the nature of memory which is going to be i think a much more um i mean there's there's gonna be a lot of experts brought in uh from from galane's side especially this one woman, um, which we will do an episode on the Mademoiselle Loftus, uh, who is, who is basically you get, if you've ever raped anybody, you get her to be your expert. Uh, I think it's Elizabeth. I'm, I'm starving and very tired. So I think it's Elizabeth Loftus. Uh, yes, it is. Cause I know this somebody is her with her specialty name, is like smearing Weinst rape victims. Weinstein, Cosby, uh, going back to like the eighties. I mean, all the satanic panic stuff. I mean, she is, she is like the lady you get and they got her basically to say like, you know, people's memories are false a lot of the times. Um, but I mean, I don't think even, even with that, you have four different girls up there testifying. We've heard from three so far. You have a lot of corroborating testimony from other people who were there. We still don't know who... Um, the next witnesses are going to be, you know, to corroborate 
what we heard today and 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 Annie Farmer, the final victim. Um, and I just don't see like, okay, yeah, maybe they were smiling and laughing sometime. It doesn't doesn't matter if you smile, you're still being sex trafficked. Like it's still a crime to uh to move this girl this this like this child from one state to another in order to exploit her sexually even if she's bragging about it to her friends like it doesn't matter if if uh, how she acted out like you know this traumatic situation she might not even know it's traumatic at the time people react in so many different ways to things but at the end of the day it is still a very much a crime to have done this stuff and so that's like that's that's the thing to keep in mind too it's like yeah okay they can contradict themselves they can bring in ex-boyfriends they can they can even brag that you know about it to anybody it doesn't matter like it it's i mean it might matter slightly to the jury but legally it doesn't matter she still did it and i think that they're showing pretty well that she did do a lot of this stuff and at that point I suspect what they're going to tie it all together with is, of course, the age-old libertarian argument of age of consent laws mm. and how, I guess, like some of this stuff is happening in New Mexico mm -hmm. where the age of consent is what? Yes. 16? Yeah. Um, yeah. So that then all of a sudden it's like entirely, you know, it's an entirely different conversation where it's like, oh, if it did happen, was it really illegal though? Like... Right. Exactly. And they were into it. Plus, uh, you know, look, cause look at them smiling in this photo. And also it wasn't even illegal, even if it did happen. Exactly. That sort of thing. Yeah. There's going to be a lot of age of consent talk. Yeah. Which of course is, uh, you know, every libertarian's wet dream. Yes, <laughs> um, totally. Um, we're going to be there every day. So it's funny. All these people keep commenting and they're like, Wow, keep it up. I, I can't believe you guys are doing this. You're not going to do this the whole time, right? It's like, no, we're here. We're covering this trial. You're going to do here. this the whole time? You're going to literally be there for, like, if it takes months, you're going to be there every day? It's not going to take months. It's not going to take months. In fact, the prosecution announced today that it's resting on Thursday, which is oh, pretty which crazy. Which is, yeah. Um, so it's moving quickly, but they they originally said six weeks. But yeah, we're going to be there. We've got, we, we're covering the whole thing. Gavel to gavel, baby. We yeah, I'm, that's I'm the, waiting for I'm waiting for Grace to come back so we can go shoot guns. That's what we were supposed yeah, to do like a while I, ago. I know, but you can't even have a gun in New York. It's ridiculous. I keep asking the marshals of the courtroom if I could borrow one of theirs, and they, they, I mean, the guy did let me hold it and pop off a few in the I, hallway. One but. of the guys would let me. <laughs> they I bet me. they would let you hold the gun. Yeah, yeah, they I always, like me. I reach for it, but I never grab. Mm -hmm. So what's up? Are you guys tied with the marshals? You, you're, you're, uh, you're there's pro one that I'm cool with for sure. He's cool. Are... He's nice. He was talking to me today and he was like, oh, I don't think that lawyer did a good job. And I was like, you guys pay attention to this? Well, it's <laughs> funny because some of the marshals are like kind of like snoozing and like checking their phones. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But today the marshal was just like hands on the fucking banister, like watching it. Because the thing is, Epstein's famous, right? Like, yeah, totally. I, 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 like it, it is like, a, I mean, obviously these guys work at SDNY. A lot of really big cases are tried there. But like. This is one of the things where it's like, even if you're not really like, you know, you don't really care about like El Chapo or whatever, because he got tried either at this one or in Brooklyn, but he got tried in SDNY. Um, like these guys like, no, you know, they know who Epstein is. And so it's like, they're talking about Jeffrey. I like they're, some of them are really watching it, but they are, uh, some, some are cool. Some are, I've had, I've Very, had struggles. I'm going to say some. that they are like, look like little cartoon characters of New York guys. Yes. <laughs> Every like, single if one. It, has I'm a, surprised like, they accent. don't have Yankees hats on. You know what I mean? They've got that vibe, for <laughs> sure. Long Island Yankees fans. Yes, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> okay. Um, is people want to know in the chat, and this is like a constant question coming in. Uh oh. Why is Ghislaine Maxwell Protestant when her oh father my God, was asking? Jewish? Where, what evidence do you have, can answer this. sir? What evidence do I? What? What don't I have? I'm like literally looking for this book. Sorry, right you're in the hot seat now. Yeah. Oh, I'm in the hot seat. I you think she'll this be in the hot seat. You thought this was going to be like seat. an Andrew Cuomo, Chris Cuomo situation? Absolutely no. not. 
she's going to be in the hot seat. And by that, I mean hell, which Protestants and not Jews go to, or can <laughs> go to, not necessarily go to. Uh, no. So here's the deal, right? All right. So she's Jewish. I'm Jewish. And so I, you know, I have a bit of a, a obviously invisibly so, but, um, you know, I, I, you know, the, thing, the thing about Judaism, right? They'll tell you, and, and I don't really subscribe to this too much, but you know, it, it is in Jewish law. It's a match. It's passed down matrilineally, True. right? This is true. Ghislaine's mother, Betsy, was her Betsy. Pet name. Be- best Betsy um, is uh, a descendant of French. Well, she's French. Her father, Yuck. a papist, a Catholic. Her mother, a Huguenot. And I have in my backpack, which is beyond my reach right now, so I cannot grab it. And there's too many wires in the way. I knock over the microphone. I have in my backpack highlighted passages from her mother's autobiography written after her father's death, which say that her mother's religion is French Protestant or French Huguenot Protestant. Huguenot's a complicated history there, but basically French Protestants. And her other son, I believe it's Philip, she names, is also a Protestant. However, he's an Anglican. Now, 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 I hear you saying, like, Brace, Brace, isn't... Oh, Christina and Isabel, the two twins that are also Maxwell siblings and, and Ghislaine's sisters, aren't they Jewish? Okay, yes, they are. Yes, they are. Yes, one lives in, I think, believe Christina lives in Israel. Yes, Isabel did help her father sell Israeli spyware, uh, the promise uh, via the, uh, uh, the company Information on Demand to many different countries. Yes, they are. However, Ghislaine, I have also heard from some elderly ex- Epstein experts at this trial specifically does not identify as Jewish. And there is absolutely no proof that she does. And I will swear to you, prove that she is not. I think she just did. Where did it? Yeah. I mean, that was pretty, that was pretty good. Where, where, I don't even know how this started. Who says she was? Oh my God. This is the only thing that Brace has talked about for the the entire trial. (laughs) Every day he's like, "Do you know she?" I was like, "You told me this yesterday." Yes. Do you, do you know what it's like being Jewish, Liz? No, you don't. You don't know what it's like. Okay. And let me tell you something. Brace and uh, your Sarah guy Silverman like me, both are are tired of Jew face. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, listen. If I was her, I'd be a little tired of Jew face too, if you know what I mean. But <laughs> I, you know, I see. You know, I, every day I wake up, I log on to uh, it, it, the computer. I search. Hollywood sex scandals, and I see another one of our guys. Why are you searching that every day? <laughs> I don't know. See if there's any new, new ones. <laughs> you know, what you only what you search it bi-weekly? I'm searching that every day. Hollywood sex scandals, and I see these names pop up on my screen. And I got to tell you, as a Jewish man, it's not great for us. It's not great. It has not pedophilia. I, I'm telling. We're. We're talking, we're talking Harvey, we're talking Woody, we're talking Jeffrey, we're talking Leslie. I mean, there's so many, and to, to, I I mean, it's not like Philip Roth did you any favors. He didn't do us any favors. No, (laughs) Philip Roth, no, Philip Roth, oh boy, I wish he was Protestant so he could be talking to Satan right now. Um, but, uh. (laughs) But no, so I am. I am like, all right. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of these 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 wacko people being like Jewish pedophiles. Blah blah. I'm like, "Eh, wrong, bitch. She is a fucking Protestant pedophile. Also, any Catholics out there? I'm doing you guys a solid too. So I want you to remember that if hell does turn out to be real, Protestants are are like fucking freaky as fuck though. Too. Those are like some. They rarely ever get. They rarely ever get flagged though. I mean, technically, you have evangelicals. Uh, yeah, I feel like I feel yeah. like when Somehow you think about everyone pedophilia, everyone forgets the KKK or a bunch of Protestants. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. That's why I just said <laughs> white evangelicals, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Like I totally agree with you, and yet the meta is always like, "Oh, look at the Catholic Church or the anti-Semitic." Which, to be uh, fair, we should look at the Catholic Church. Oh, for sure, for sure. But I'm just saying, like, it's always <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. beautiful architecture. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's always Protestants always escape the uh, the. Yeah. the pedophile accusations not from me brother yeah exactly. not from me no, you guys are pretty you, you 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 muslims i feel like are you muslim i i am yes but not you like a are, good one like i'm like yeah, as muslim obvious, as you're brother yeah 
<laughs> I know. <laughs> Listen, I, I understand. You're Kufar. I am. But yeah, I, I, I do all of the sins. I do all, every type of haram possible. That's all right. Except for um, usury, weirdly yeah. enough. That's you the, can't do usury. No, that's, that's our we do usury. No, that's literally the only thing I don't do is like use I don't even you know, I don't have a credit card even. <laughs> oh, brother. No, I can get you in. Uh, I've been do, I've just been doing micro len loans. I found <laughs> out I did find out actually that my grandfather, Jewish man, uh okay, I always thought he ran a pawn shop in San Jose my whole life. My dad told me a couple years ago, I was like, No, he was a loan shark. He called, he called, he called all the money he had. Cause like he, like he, my, my, uh, grandma moved to Palm Springs and it's like Jewish community home. And, uh, when like they're old and my, my grandfather had all this mon cash that he called his kosher money because it wasn't taxed because he had, uh, loan sharked oh, it. Oh my God. Interestingly enough, aunt became a Orthodox after that. So who knows? Wow. Yeah. Wait, you can do that. I'm I'm uh, in the parlance of this platform. I am not capping right now. <laughs> you can just did, loan people I, money. At no, no, I know that. Rates. I didn't realize you could just like go. No, no, I was not talking about the loan sharking. You could just like <laughs> turn it up and be like, I'm orthodox now. All you got to do is pop on the wig, baby. That's I, it? I honestly don't know. I lost contact with her and then she turned up to be orthodox. So I don't, I don't know. I'm too afraid to get back in contact. It's like, I guess it's like. It's like the born agains, you know what I mean? They probably ride or die way harder. I mean, yeah, when you're orthodox, yeah. you're literally riding or dying way harder regardless. But Oh, my God. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I always try to give them the nod here because in you know, it's New York. There's a lot of orthodox Jews. Never get a nod back. Never. I get like a, like a desultory glare sometimes. Orthodox, from the orthodox Jews? Yeah, but I'm kafar to them, so it's like Yeah. This, yeah. I feel that. Yeah. Okay. Well, this was this was great. Um, anything else you guys Thank want to talk about? Us. I don't know. I mean, look, we're we're tackling the real issues. Uh, Brace talked about you know uh, pedophilia and, and its prominence yes. in in uh, you know famous in Judaism. Yeah. In, no. 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 The opposite. Wow. Look, she's, she's coming at you again. Oh, I'm a journalist. I, I, I gotta frame the frame she's the eight, stories. I gotta reframe the stories. Eight feet away from me, in another room, and I believe yeah. me. If you don't think I'm gonna come out of here charging like a damn bull, well, you don't have a gun. We're embrace this so. funny Airbnb in Chinatown, which like uh, the roof broke this afternoon. I'm in a I'm way. in a tenement. Yeah, all the water <laughs> fall, fall fell. A bunch of I had to leave the court early because uh my um my ceiling fell in uh, with water and uh. Turn, that's like really wet and also yellow but it's not piss what the fuck yeah i don't know brother only how in did New you York. find the one place i, I know. know he's president chaos it follows him he i'm in a tenement it. it's dialectic I'm in a tenement. yeah where you go chaos follows you bring it it comes for you it's both grace tackled two important issues today uh galay Mas uh, Gale maxwell is 100 percent, without a doubt not jewish Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, Orthodox Jews are gatekeeping Judaism from, from Brace specifically. Yeah. Yeah. I'm more Orthodox than they am. I, I the, yeah. the child of, uh, or the grandchild of loan sharks. That's the most Orthodox you can get. Okay. All right. Technically, it has to be your grandmother, though. <laughs> Wait for. No. No, okay. No. I thought you okay. A little call back, just a little fun call back. Oh, okay. I was I thought you were being serious. You, you guys are you know. <laughs> I just go like seriously anti Semitic, like just shockingly. You are Polish. Do hey. not Hassan's gonna get banned. Oh yeah, no. true. Is that true. A Scott, yeah. We're having anti Semitism. Oh <laughs> big tech. <laughs> big tech censorship? Yeah. Oh, That's the only God. thing stopping me from, you know, saying slurs all the time. Well, oh, they don't want they don't want the Poles speaking out. And once you heard Polish, you won't either. <laughs> that's cute. Good. I liked I didn't mind that yeah, one. That's pretty good. It's a Z funny language. Z Z Z it's Z very weird. You're gonna get yeah. oh my god. Sounds if, like Russian. You can't even do an impression of Polish. It I'm gonna so I'm I'm from though, no, that's Liz and I are both ancestrally, that's where we're from. So it's this is Oh I yeah, no, I'm f I can say whatever the fuck I want. Franz Franzak? Give me a yeah, break. Fine. Franchak? 
Yeah. Friend no. check. I mean, also, the ladies. Yeah. No. Yeah, no. The one group of people that you can't make fun of on this platform or in general in my community is Polish people. They get very upset. Really? I'm oh, one yeah. of them, though. I don't get upset. She is Polish. And I'm, my family's from the Polish Ukrainian border, which means we're Jewish. But <laughs> possibly some Poland there. Yeah. I feel that. Um, okay. Well, I got, I just wanted to say, you know, I've been, I've been, uh, getting very excited every night for you guys' coverage. <laughs> and I feel like you guys are doing a great job. You know, you're my favorite journalist now, for sure. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> you sure you want to shoot guns back in LA? <laughs> yeah, I'm down. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, you guys have been doing a great job. And everybody, this is True and On, for those of you who don't know. And uh, I've talked before in the past about uh, your your Elon Musk coverage as well. I think that was when I was like, yeah, you know, I got to bite the bullet. I got to give you guys $5 a month, you know? This is so, Thank yeah. You. I it became a, a <laughs> Patreon subscriber. Aww, well, thanks, it makes dude. you feel any better. I'm lending it out at very favorable interest rates to myself, <laughs> to people in desperate need. Following your grandfather's footsteps. <laughs> exactly. Well, I got to eat or I'm going to pass out from the, what's the thing where you get low blood, that, that low blood sugar. I don't know, but I, I do too. I'm in the same situation. I, 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 I thought I could have like a big bite in the beginning. And then oh. I was like, I'm talking with food in my mouth. This is so rude. I can't do this. <laughs> so, in fact, where the societies that I traffic in, that's actually the most polite way to talk. <laughs> oh my God. I, 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 lo I love to be in the presence of a true masticator. <laughs> With a nice, thick chop, possibly covered in some extra sugary applesauce. The gourmand loves to eat a buttery piece of corn like this. <laughs> oh, I feel I feel like it would be too lowbrow for him, but you know. Well, it's it's corn. It's it's uh it's like Goldschlager corn, where every oh. other kernel is like a gold nugget. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, thanks a lot for coming on, guys. <laughs> right, this bye, was bye. wonderful. Even though you, you went to Chapel first, and I will never forget that. You know, yeah, we're on a different schedule. We had to. We, yeah, we, no, I we, feel you. I feel you. I, I, I had to. Who would get madder at me if I changed it? And they would be more mad about it. Yeah, no, I don't Which know, is yeah. actually a compliment for you. Yeah, I, that means I'm just a more reasonable person, of course. Ex literally does. No, I'm just kidding. Um, it's all good. And, uh, you know, thanks a lot for coming on. And uh, hopefully Thank we'll you. see you guys soon again. Yes, all right. anytime. All right. See perfect. Ya. Bye, guys. Bye. Guys, that was True Anon, uh, Liz Franzik, and Brace Belden. I love them. Uh, I think you guys probably understand why. They're fucking hilarious. They're awesome. They're funny. And uh, they're brilliant. So I wanted, to, um, I wanted to keep up with what was going on in the Ghislaine Maxwell trial. And once and for all, show you... Sons of bitches who don't believe that Jeffrey Epstein uh, was suicide did rather than committed suicide. Uh, what the truth was. Okay. This one's personally talked to me over Twitter DMs when I was depressed at the beginning of the pandemic. Genuinely wonderful person. Yeah, they're great. They're awesome.